Ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about the three biggest reasons that you should consider delaying Social Security. Now, these reasons don't apply to everyone, but again, these are the factors you want to consider when thinking about when you should start your Social Security, because when you turn it on, it's going to be the biggest differentiator and difference maker in how, how much money you're going to get from Social Security and eventually how comfortable your retirement will be in total. So if you're new to the channel, so good to have you. My name is Dallin Hawes. I'm a financial planner who serves federal employees every single day, and I absolutely love it. So let's dive into this Social Security question. Here are, again, the three main reasons why people should delay Social Security. Number one, this one's the first, and it's relatively easy. If you're still working, you probably shouldn't start Social Security. Social Security, for every single year you delay, you don't take it, you get more benefits later, right? So if you're still working, you don't need Social Security, I would probably just not take it. The one exception to that is if you're already age 70 years old. Once you hit age 70, there's absolutely no reason not to take it, even if you're still working, it doesn't matter. So if you're under 70 and still working, I would probably just delay Social Security nine, nine times out of 10, okay? But again, even if you're still working, once you hit 70, take it right then. So that's reason number one. If you're still working, you don't need it. Might as well get those increases from Social Security. It gets complicated depending on your age and how much you're making because your Social Security can be reduced if you're working still. It just gets complicated. Most of the time I recommend if you're still working, probably just delay Social Security until either you're done working or you hit 70. Okay, that's number one. Number two, if you are that, if you're married, if you're married and you're the higher earner, that means your Social Security is probably going to be bigger than your spouse's. Okay, and as the spouse with the bigger Social Security benefit, you actually have a responsibility that your spouse doesn't have. The higher earner almost always has a responsibility to make sure that if they passed away, their spouse, the lower earner, is going to be okay. And let me tell you why. For Social Security, this is what happens if one of you was to pass away. Let's say your benefit is $2,000 a month and your spouse's benefit is $1,000 a month. If you pass away, then your spouse's benefit, even though they're still alive, that amount will actually go away and they'll start receiving about $2,000 a month. Whatever you were receiving, their benefit actually kind of round up to that amount, okay? So what that means is you as the higher earner, when you start your benefits actually matters more, generally speaking, than the lower earner because your benefit's gonna last both of your lifetimes. If your spouse passes away first, you keep your own benefit, the 2,000, because it was bigger. If you pass away first, they keep your benefit because it was bigger. It matters more, it lasts longer, okay? So if you're the higher earner, you delaying Social Security is going to increase the benefit that you'll have both while you're both living, but also when one of you passes away, it means a bigger benefit's going to be there for the surviving spouse, okay? You or your spouse. And if you have health issues, some people, some people with health issues say, look, I've got cancer or I've got whatever it is, you've got a health issue that may shorten your life expectancy, so they take Social Security right away. And as a single person, that may be a great reason to take Social Security right away if your life expectancy is shorter than otherwise. However, if you're married and the higher earner, again, that may be a reason to delay, even if you have health issues, because again, your benefit is going to be inherited by your spouse. So let's say you pass away at 72. On your own lifetime, it doesn't make sense to delay, but considering your spouse's lifetime as well, maybe giving them that extra benefit for the rest of their life is worth it to you. So keep that in mind. If you're the higher earner, your benefit's probably gonna be inherited by your spouse if you pass away first. And if you have health issues and your life expectancy is shortened, it may be, again, another reason to delay. Again, every situation is a little different, but these are some good principles to keep in mind. Last but not least, if you have a healthy TSP. So let me show you, let me walk you through an example. If you have a really unhealthy TSP, and what I mean by that is just there's not much in there, right? If you don't have much when it comes to retirement savings, then you may not have an option to delay Social Security, right? Because if you're 62, you're retired, you don't have anything in your TSP, you may have to take Social Security right away because you don't have any other choice, right? It's not a great place to be, but that's where some people are. However, if you have a really healthy TSP, you have a ton of investments that you've saved and invested, then maybe a strategy might be, hey, maybe draw down a little bit from your investments to allow you to delay Social Security 
and to lock in those increases you get from Social Security over time, okay? It's guaranteed increases from Social Security, which is nice, right? Again, this isn't a perfect scenario all the time. It doesn't always make sense. But again, if you have a really unhealthy TSP, you probably can't delay Social Security. You don't have that flexibility. But if you have a good, healthy amount in the TSP, you can withdraw down from that, which then allows you to delay Social Security longer. So those are the things to think about. If you are still working um, or and under 70, if you're a higher earner, even with health issues, if you have a healthy TSP, those may be good reasons to delay Social Security to get those guaranteed increases over time to lock down a larger amount that you'll get for the rest of your lifetime and potentially your spouse's lifetime as well. So I hope that's helpful. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time.